Hey guys, my name is Mimo and welcome to Simply Skin Enthusiast, where we take skincare one day at a time because skincare is not a sprint but it's a marathon. First of all, a very happy new year to you all. 2020, what an year, like I don't even want to think about it. So let's hope that 2021 will be happy and healthier for all of us. A quick disclaimer before I start my video, I'm not a dermatologist or an esthetician, but I'm just sharing with you all my personal experience with skincare for entertainment purpose. So if you like this kind of entertaining skincare content, please subscribe to my channel. So let's get straight into today's video. So I'm going to share with you all how I started my retinol journey. Retinol is considered as the gold standard in skincare. It is one of the most researched and proven ingredient in skincare and it has so many benefits. First, retinol increases cell turnover and also stimulates collagen production, which means that we will have more healthy, plump skin. And also, it softens fine lines and wrinkles. Great, isn't it? It also helps treat acne. Actually, retinol was first developed to treat acne. And by research, they knew that, oh well, Retinol also has these other great properties which is great for anti-aging. Well, with all these properties, this looks like a great ingredient for us to have in our skincare routine. Like, isn't this everything that we want in skincare? All these benefits? Anti-aging, treating acne, face away hyperpigmentation. But there's a catch with retinol. It could be really irritating to the skin when you first start it. So I was like, how do I do this? I want all these benefits of retinol, but I don't want to irritate my skin. So I did a whole lot of reading and research. I read so many things about retinol, retinol use, different kinds of retinol. Uh, I watched so many videos on people's experiences while starting retinol. So there's two types of retinol, over-the-counter retinol and prescription strength retinol. Over-the-counter retinol is where you can buy from the shelves in a store, in Sephora where prescription strength retinol, mostly known as tretinoin, is uh, something that you can get with a prescription from a dermatologist. So I wanted to go through the over-the-counter route because it's easier for me to get the product. So while looking into different retinol products, I had my eye on the Inky List Retinol Serum because the ingredient list is great. It seems to be really gentle and I thought that this would be a great starting point for me in my retinol journey. So let's first dive into the ingredients of the Inky List Retinol. Inky List Retinol has 1% Reti Star and 0.5% Grand Active Retinoid. So what is Reti Star? Reti Star is a combination of vitamin E, sodium ascorbate and hydrogenated castor oil in caprylic triglyceride, which is derived from coconut. So when they say 1% retinol, you're not actually getting 1% of retinol in the serum because that 1% is in combination with these ingredients that I just mentioned. So that was okay with me because I was a retinol newbie. So the key in starting retinol is starting with a low dosage. So that was just good for me since it's least likely to irritate my skin and Retistar is known as a stabilized form of retinol. So what is Grand Active Retinoid? Grand Active Retinoid is um, quite new to the retinoid family but it's known to be um, more gentler, less irritating and it, it's known to be binding directly to uh, retinoic acid receptors in our skin. So what is retinoic acid? So our skin converts retinol into retinoic acid. So it is when then our skin can use this ingredient for all these great benefits. So this grand active retinoid is known to bind directly with our retinoic acid receptors in our skin. But most of the research on grand active retinoid comes from the brand itself. So I couldn't find much independent research done on grand active retinoid, but it seems to be a really promising ingredient because it's less irritating. So now let's look into some other ingredients in this serum. This has um, hyaluronic acid, soybean extract, which is really nourishing for the skin. It has squalane. Squalane is one of my favorite oils. It's very moisturizing. It's nourishing. And at the same time, even oilier skin types can very well tolerate squalane. It's marketed as a retinol serum, but it's more like a very well-rounded, well-formulated uh, product for your skin for all these anti-aging benefits. 
So the thing you guys really need to know when starting retinol is that when you first start it, your skin goes through this phase called retinization phase where you can feel your skin is dry, flaky and you have all this kind of like irritation. But it's actually more normal than people actually think because that is a normal phase that your skin goes through, the retinization phase. That sounds so good, the retinization, that sounds really cool, isn't it? So now let's talk about how I incorporated retinol into my skincare routine. I only use it in my evening PM routine because I don't want to use a retinol in my daytime routine. I don't think anyone should use a retinol in their daytime routine. So the second key in starting retinol is starting it slow. I use it one night and took a break for the next three nights. And then again, I use it the next night. So the first week I started using retinol, I did not use any kind of AHA, BHA, PHA, or any kind of exfoliators, or any kind of harsh actives, because I was just letting my skin get used to this new ingredient, so that I would minimize the risk of irritation. And one very important thing is, I applied retinol after my moisturizer. So after I do my all those essences, serums, moisturizers, so when my moisturizer is completely dry, then I apply my retinol because this will have a slight buffering effect so you're not getting retinol directly into the skin so it's less likely to be irritating for your skin and as I mentioned before I was really really careful in not irritating my skin when introducing retinol into my skincare routine and I think everyone should be really really careful so I did this for two weeks and it was fine, I did not have any kind of irritation. Maybe a slight dryness, very, very teeny, tiny, slight dryness. I wouldn't even wanna mention it, but yeah, just a teeny bit, because it's already a very gentle retinol serum, and plus I was applying it on top of my moisturizer, so it was being buffered. So after my second week, I thought of like maybe increasing the interval of using the retinol. So I was using it one night and I took a break for two nights instead of my usual three, which I did for the first two weeks. And then my skin was absolutely fine at that point. So I was like, okay, maybe now I can apply it before my moisturizer because I was like, my skin is somehow gotten used to retinol. So that's how I started with like one night use and two nights of break and before my moisturizer. So that, that went on for around like four weeks and after four weeks I started using retinol on alternative nights. So currently I use my retinol on alternative night on one night, the next night is break from retinol. I wouldn't want to use a retinol on every single night because I still want to have those AHAs and BHAs in my skincare routine which you should not mix with retinol. And one thing I would like to mention is that the first week I was getting into retinol, I did not use any kind of chemical exfoliators like AHAs or BHAs because again, reducing the risk of irritation. So after the second week, I slowly introduced back my AHA exfoliated toners maybe once or twice a week on nights that I'm not using retinol and my skin was totally fine. The third key in introducing a retinol or using retinol in your skincare routine is being consistent because you don't get like mind-blowing results in two, four or six weeks. You just gotta be patient and be consistent. For me currently, I don't have much wrinkles or fine lines, but I'm using this for maintenance. You know, you really need to make sure that cell turnover is going on as I age and then, you know, have that collagen being stimulated in my skin. So for me right now, retinol is more like a maintenance. While I was searching for mild, low dosage retinol serums to start with, the next best option for me, which I found was the ordinary 0.2% retinol in squalane. 0.2% retinol is, I think, a really great way to start because it's just like such a low dosage and it's in squalane. Again, squalane is a very nourishing and lightweight oil which almost all skin types can tolerate. So. I was weighing into these two serums, the Inkey List Retinol or the Ordinary 0.2% Retinol in Squalen. So I think these two options are great options for someone who's actually getting into the retinol train. Let's do a recap on starting the retinol. Three keys. First, 
start with the low dosage two start in slow and third key be consistent if you really really be mindful of these three keys when starting retinol it would really really help you in uh, reducing the risk of irritation so there goes my first video on simply skin enthusiast maybe i was looking a bit crazy with my expression and everything but i promise you the next video is going to be better than this so if you like this video please subscribe and give me a thumbs up and please let me know in the comment box your experience with retinol or your experience with this particular inkyless retinol and how you incorporated retinol into your skincare would love to know your experiences as well I really hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye!